coming back to the time when you were 15, tell us more about the, the, the first paper you, the first scientific paper you wrote and how it came about. So that was kind of 1973, 1974 was kind of a, a very exciting time for particle physics. There'd been a, um, well, there'd been these sort of two opposing uh, kind of approaches to particle physics. Um, one was based on quantum field theory and based on the idea that you could work out kind of when particles interact, there is kind of one particle involved in, in sort of making the interaction happen, two particles, three particles, you kind of count the processes, you could kind of draw Feynman diagrams and things of, of uh, uh, sort of what what was what was happening inside, so to speak. That was approach number one. Approach number two, the so-called S-matrix approach, was, uh, uh, was kind of just throw the particles together and um, just ex uh, describe the probabilities for things happening and then work out the constraints on those probabilities. And so in 1973, uh, QCD theory of quarks and gluons uh, had kind of had an advance um, that was not yet widely believed, but was kind of a, you know, quantum field theory seemed to be winning relative to this other approach. It's kind of an ultimate irony that in modern sort of things derived from string theory, the S matrix approach is back. But that's, that's just the arc of, uh, of scientific history. But um, at the time, there were a bunch of new experiments in particle physics, 1974, I guess, there was a thing called the J Psi particle discovered which was kind of very unexpected and kind of everybody was like, what is this? Then there was a, an electron positron annihilation. There was a, uh, as you increase the energy, there was some sort of unexpected increase in the uh, uh, probability of interaction between the electrons and positrons. This all sounds incredibly technical and detailed, but at the time it seemed very exciting and uh, was kind of like, and so it was kind of, well, what is that phenomenon? And so my first effort in writing a paper was um, actually my, I, I think my very first effort was, um, which I never published, was about uh, this um, so-called narrow resonances, these sort of particle-like things that um, uh, showed up in these experiments and it was kind of like, can I explain what's going on here? The first paper that I ended up publishing was about um, uh, what I called hadronic electrons, which is kind of a, a theory for uh, substructure in electrons, which people, the, the kind of prevailing view had been, and probably really in many ways still is, that electrons are just point particles. There's nothing inside an electron. A proton, there's all kinds of stuff going on inside a proton. But an electron, it's just a, a, you know, a perfect geometrical point, so to speak. And so at the time, I had kind of a theory, turned out not to be a very good theory, that electrons had an actual size around 10 to the minus 18 meters. Um, which was too small to have been directly observed at the time, but could potentially have accounted for these various observations that were made. Uh, it's sort of ironic that in modern times, I, uh, my uh, current theory of physics that developed in the last few years also implies that electrons have non-zero size, um, except that whereas I thought it might be 10 to the minus 18 meters back in those days, now... It's not a very clear estimate, but maybe it's 10 to the minus 81 meters. So it's kind of, a, you know, wrong by many, many ways of magnitude, but kind of amusingly the flip around of the digits. But um, in, in um, so I, at the time, was kind of, well, by, by that time, I kind of had access to a university library. It was, uh, I guess it was a more open period in the history of the world because you can kind of just like bicycle to the university library and just walk in. And the fact that you're a kid doesn't really, nobody really sort of seemed to care. And um, uh, so, you know, so I could look at the latest physics journals and so on. And uh, uh, I kind of, a lot of these journals were kind of weekly journals and um, you could kind of look at them and see what was happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, uh, Anyway, I eventually, I sort of thought, okay, I'll write up this paper. And um, I, you know, I remember I just stuck in the mailbox, sent it off to a journal. And uh, the, but I think by the, by the second journal I sent it to, it's like, sure, we'll publish this type thing. And um, uh, so that's, that's kind of, um, uh, and it was, you know, I would say in retrospect, I haven't looked at it in detail in forever, but, but, um, uh, you know, my impression is 
the uh, uh, interesting, innovative idea didn't really work that well, but the presentation was fairly decent. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was probably the, the worst paper I ever wrote. <laughs>